Darktable is a free open source application that will enable us to transform a raw file taken on a camera to a picture file which is stored on the computer and that can be used to upload to social media or that can be printed or that can be kept in an archive. You may already have heard of Lightroom and Capture One which are similar software. In this tutorial we will take a hands-on approach just starting with basic steps, importing a photo, we'll do one or two transformations and then we will export it to the hard drive. And as we go on in the episodes, well the transformations will get more and more complicated. We'll go more into detail and see how far we can go with the transformation of a raw file. Let's go. The URL to download Darktable is darktable.org. Um, on the website there are a couple of links, so install here or at the top, install there, where you can choose your operating system, Mac or Windows. So I'm on Mac, click on Mac, and I can download the disk image for Darktable just above here, the Windows installer. So I'll let you download that and install it and then let's run it and see what happens. So when you launch Darktable for the first time, you'll have a screen a bit like this one. Um, what we notice is uh, in the center, we have a big gray area and it's written there are no images in this collection. So maybe um, we want to uh, import some images. Before that, let's just go here to the settings, change one or two things, global preferences. And here we have our preferences. I'm going to leave much of this on its own for the moment. I just want to go to processing and make sure that in auto apply pixel workflow defaults you have scene referred and not display referred and that for the chromatic adaptation defaults you're on modern and not legacy. That will ensure that we're using the most recent modules for Darktable. Uh, so when that's done let's go back to the images in the collection. Here we, we are in what is called the light table which shows us the photos we have on our hard drive that we'd like to work on. So on the left here we have import, import folder and we'll go to the hard drive and find a folder where you have some images. So here I have a folder which I will select and open and in this folder I should see some pictures appear there we are. So I have three photos there. Let's start with the first one, which is this B. I'll go on that one, just select it and go to the dark room. So here we have the dark room screen where all the modifications will take place. So in the center we have a picture, and on the right hand side we have what's called the pipeline. The pipeline is the list of transformations that the software will do in order from the lowest to the top. Some of these we can't change. A raw white black point, this one is greyed out here, that means we can't change it. White balance, highlight reconstruction, demosaic, orientation, all this seems very complicated when you start. Um, it's the standard pipeline. The difference with Lightroom Capture One and the other applications is that in Darktable we know everything that is happening to our picture. So for the moment, what do we have? Um, raw black white points that is defined with uh, by the camera you have. Um, we're not touching that. White balance. Here we have a little button we can switch on and off. You'll see that it will turn green. Um, we do need a white balance to give an idea of the, the colours on the file. Highlight reconstruction here is just in case you overexposed your picture and some parts of the photo have no data because they're overexposed. The software will try and recreate some data um, so the picture looks not too bad. Demosaic orientation that is um, whether your picture was taken, the camera was upright or whether it was horizontal. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is exposure. So here we have exposure. If I open that, it's, I have a little uh, 
tick here, compensate camera exposure plus zero, zero. That means that on the camera, I did not have any um, compensation for exposure. Um, this module will give us the general global brightness of our photo. Whatever we do here with the sliders, we are not destroying any data at all. The data is in the raw file, which is now in Darktable. So um, even if I try to overexpose or underexpose, whatever I do, I can always get the information back um, whenever I like. Uh, so I have, a, I have a slider. The slider is by default at 0 0.5. If I click on the slider and push it to the right, then the picture is getting brighter. And if I go to the left, it will get darker. Um, there is something that has to be said about screens. Screens are lit from behind. So sometimes, depending on whether your room is light or dark, whether you have um, a yellow light bulb on or whether you have window light, which is sunlight, um, the eye will always have problems perceiving what is true white. Our eyes adapt to our environment, and even if dark, we're in a dark room um, and look at a white door, or we, we will see it white. But in reality, it's probably grey or dark grey. That can be a problem. Dark table has um, an option to let our eyes see what real white is like, and this is a little light bulb at the bottom. This is an option I use systematically. I click on that, the picture gets smaller. I have a white border around. So now my eyes see what is true white and beyond what is gray. Um, that enables me to have a neutral background and I'm going to adjust the exposure looking at the picture now and I will have an idea of what is bright and what is not. And that's a good option for me. So if I adjust the brightness, the global brightness to that, what I'm doing in reality is just pushing all the luminosity pushing it to the right there. And that's done. What can happen is some, pic some pixels will get too bright or not bright enough. And that is where the second module will come into play. Put that back. So exposure, that's done. I can switch it off to see what I did if I like. That was the picture at the beginning, which looked okay on the screen when I um, first switched it on, but now with the border, now I've done the adjustments, I do realise it was too dark. Um, the input colour profile here, just check, if I click on that, just check that your, your working profile is linear rec 20 RGB, um, which is the recommended workspace for Darktable. Just check that. Colour calibration will enable us to change the white balance here. The white balance, I never change it here now because the new module is colour calibration. That may be on the second video, but for this one, I want to go quickly. I want to do, I want to be simple. Um, I just want to get a picture onto the hard drive. So the colours look okay. Um, so I'm not touching that. And I'm going, now I'm going to go to Filmic. Filmic is quite a complex module. The idea of Filmic is to adjust the darker parts and the lighter parts of the picture to fit them in to the display. Um, if by moving the exposure I have some parts that are overexposed then Filmic will gradually push the brighter parts um, and compress them together so that nothing is overexposed at the end. Um, if you know Lightroom and or um, Capture One the equivalent doesn't work the same really. But the equivalent would be the white point and the black point. Um, here we have a curve which is very similar to the response curve that uh, film uh, uses. Um, so the white relative exposure is the first one I'm going to touch which is at plus 4.4 EV. What does that mean? Well, it, If you have a look here at zero, zero is the middle grey. It's the value I changed with the exposure slider, which is why in the pipeline it's the first one to change. 0, 0.0, so the middle grey is 18%. Perceptually, 18% grey is what I would perceive as being a middle grey, the midpoint between black and white. So here we have it, it's the orange dot here. 
if I move to the left, the picture is getting brighter and I'm losing some whites. So just to be simple, I'm going to I'm really have a look at the back of the bee here, which is important to me. I'm not too bothered about this flower, it looks very white. I want the bee to be kind of exposed correctly. So I'll set that at 4.59. I'm doing this with my eyes. I'm not looking at the histogram. Just doing this with my eyes. And then I'll change the black exposure. And if you notice when I change the black exposure, I'm also changing the whites, the middle gray. Everything changes because we have a curve here, which is created by the white point and the black point. And um, to fit the curve, smoothly, which is very important uh, to have smooth transitions on the photo, the curve will slightly move um, the middle grey. It will move, the whole curve moves really a little bit. That doesn't matter to me really very much. If I move this to the right, then if you notice the darker parts are getting darker. There are very many dark parts in this photo. If we move it to the left, if you have a look, here yeah, the darker parts of the photo got a bit lighter. So I need to move that to a position. There are two things I'm looking at. First of all, it needs to look good on the photo. And second of all, I have a warning here, which is orange. Orange here, I have 0% of the display, which is the darkest the display can do, to 100%, which is the brightest that the display can show me. So really what I will call on the screen, the black, black point of the screen and the white point of the screen. If the curve, which is a mathematical curve, um, is orange, it means that I'm underneath zero and that can give problems to other modules with calculations um, because these numbers are negative. So there is a thing to avoid and this can't be done automatically by the software because I'm making, so I want, I'm making so many choices. I want to be free with my choices. So the developers have decided to um, unconstrain this curve and just use a mathematical curve and it's up to the user to make sure that he has a correct curve. Um, so I want I want it to be quite bright. I want quite a bright photo. I don't want it to be too contrasty. So what I will do is just move it the brightest possible where I don't have any um, negative numbers. So nothing's orange. I have a nice smooth curve here. The picture is exposed correctly. Um, the transitions are okay in the whites up here and in the blacks on the curve. It looks fine on the picture. That is enough for me. So Filmic has done its job. And now I have a photo which looks better than what it was before. If I show you how it would look without exposure and Filmic, it would be kind of dark and muddy. I put exposure and Filmic back. See what Filmic does. Filmic. Um, has made a transition here in the very white points here and I have now smoother tones. So that's the job that Filmic does. Once that's done, I want to export. The photo is finished for me. If I want to look at it full screen, just click on the little light bulb again. There's the photo I want to export. So I'm going to go to the light table. And down here on the right, export selected. And here I have um, several options. I have a dollar file folder. The dollar is a variable in Lighttable, which means that it will save the JPEG to the same folder that the raw file was in. Dollar file name, which means it will save it with the same name as the raw file. So that's okay for me. Um, File format is JPEG. The compression of the JPEG, I can choose 100% is the highest quality, 0% is real rubbish. Um, what I generally use is 85, because that for me is a good compromise between quality and file size. Maybe you have other ideas. I'm not sure there's any real truth about what the right number is. So 85% click on export. It will overwrite any existing images because here I have overwrite files. So I'll always check that I'm okay to overwrite an image that already exists. 
This one doesn't exist. And click on yes, and there I have a file exported to, uh, where was I? In dark table videos, here I have the raw files, and here I have the JPEG that I just exported. So there we are. We have imported a raw file. We've modified the exposure and we've made sure that the black and white points are okay and we have smooth transitions. It is exported and it's done. There we are. We'll have a look at the two other photos on the next video and we'll fill in some more details.